When I look back at this year, one of the campaigns that stick out for me that we don't always report on has to do with uh, a group that we called Two Sail Junk and their Light River uh, malware implants, um, in part because, uh, because it was so relevant. And it was in January when we saw um, some forums being used as watering holes. And these forums are visited by uh, Hong Kong activists. Um, maybe some other people, but definitely activists uh, are using these sites. And we saw a full, you know, a full chain. We were able to collect a full chain um, iOS or iPhone exploit and malware implant set um, that were targeting these, these, in all likelihood, targeting these activists. We pulled it apart. It was under development, you could tell there were modifications and and uh, changes made to this implant over time, uh, over the next couple of months. And of course, it turned out that um, Hong Kong is a very hot spot, uh, especially for these activists. But the technology piece was really interesting because, again, we don't always see um, iPhones being targeted in this manner and, and being used uh, actively. You know, at our Security Analyst Summit in 2018, I did a presentation on Masha and these bears, which was about Sophocy and really their shift towards the the east, towards the east, and um, and in part a shift in their malware set towards Zebracy, uh, sort of a, what we consider a subset of Sophocy. Um, and I predicted that by the end of the year we wouldn't really see much of their flagship implant, uh, otherwise known as X-Agent or what we call SPLM uh, at the end of 2018, and that we would see more and more of Zebracy tooling or malware, uh, more of Zebracy um, uh, activity, and that they were really going to switch things up. And that did happen even by the end of 2018. Um, we do see, however, uh, SPLM here and there. Um, and I, uh, it, it, for example, at the beginning of 2020, we saw um, not only SPLM, but we saw uh, .NET variants of Xtunnel, another tool of, another malware of theirs um, that they'd been using for years in a Central European um, uh, telecom. And so they, they, their activity is here and there. We see it here and there in sort of its older form, but they certainly have shifted. And to see a .NET variant um, shows that they're moving more and more towards what we've been seeing uh, coming out of the Zebracy subset. Um, the, so essentially we, we've seen a complete uh, decrease in the volume of their use of more traditional tools that we would expect to see their their SPLM code and other implants. Their other downloaders have completely fallen off the map, Gamefish and other things. We saw them introducing a couple of newer downloaders in very, very low activity. Um, and then they moved towards uh, server-side scanning. So in 2019, um, this is something we don't necessarily uh, uh, closely track, but there were multi multiple reports of them um, scanning exchange servers, um, and we do know there was some some interest in SQL servers and SMB servers exposed on the web as well. So there's been a lot of server side activity from these guys, um, and there has definitely been a shift away from their sort of their their more traditional malware set towards other um, a, a, a different approach um, with their malware. So through the end of 2020. I mean, I would expect to see um, more of this uh, very precise uh, server-side scanning. Um, I would expect to see them not deploying uh, SPLM and having moved on to other other forms of, of other other types of malware. And um, their targeting, I, I think, has changed quite a bit since 2018 has, and has moved towards Asia and Central Asia. 2000, we've been 
talking about two Cozy Duke since 2015. We put out um, some information on the group. Um, the in, part of the interesting thing about um, what's being uh, attributed to Cozy Duke is that there has been no real evidence um, tying this tying wellness back to Cozy Duke. So, um, uh, so I'm so I'm still working with that link myself. I'm still trying to figure out how they may have come up with that. Um, and I do know that we will be presenting more on it. Actually, my colleague Brian Bartholomew will be presenting on uh, our wellness findings that we've been working on uh, for the past several months um, at our next Great Ideas uh, webinar. So more details will come out then. But I will say that at this point, um, the attribution piece is still a little uncertain for myself and that it's unusual that this kind of you know statement will just come out and, and drop in our lap like this. Again, like Kostin said, they've been active since whoever this is has been active since 2018 and we've been looking into it for quite some time. <clears throat> 